All right, um, this is a quick video which I think ends up about something which ends up getting. Want to move back a bit? Um, <laughs> this is a quick video about something which ends up getting surprisingly controversial. So I'm just going to outline my thesis. It's a good word, isn't it? Thesis. I haven't used that for a while. Okay, so the thing about, um, I mean, you'll notice that if I play, I have a reasonably classical left hand. <laughs> As my right hand is doing something a little bit non-standard, I basically use rest stroke gypsy picking, which is a style of picking used by obviously Django and the players of that school, but also Joe Pass and a few other sort of straight ahead jazz guys. Um, anyway, <clears throat> you know, um, so here's the thing. Um, I'll start with the I'll start with the right hand actually, because I find that um, one thing I've been going back towards is just playing down strokes and everything, and obviously. You think about great jazz guitarists, you think about Charlie Christian, who's uh, mostly a downstroke picker, apparently, probably not entirely, because some of his stuff I don't think you could play it that way, but it's very similar to gypsy jazz sort of style, in that, you know, you get things like... does that kind of thing, you know, pushes down through the strings and so on, uh, but he won't, he won't be doing any upsweeps like this. Which you hear from like Jimmy Rainey and all that lot. So, it's a very specific type of playing, it's mostly downstrokes. Um, Wes Montgomery, of course, played with his thumb, so um, just, just the mechanics of that has to be mostly downstrokes. I mean, accounts vary as to whether he used an upstroke on his thumb. Certainly possible, if a little bit hard to do at first. I mean, it's not something I've really worked on. Um, but, you know, I think like a mixture of like thumb and maybe some hammer-ons pull-offs and maybe a little bit of up-thumbing, um, but not that much. Um, <clears throat> And then there's a whole school of players, um, really the Tristano school, um, Billy Bauer being the, the sort of first guy to play guitar um, in, in that particular school, and obviously heavily influenced by Charlie Christian because all of the Tristano lot are big into Charlie Christian. Uh, it's all Charlie Christian and Lester Young with them, and, and Bird of course, and they're heavily into the downstroke thing, so Billy Bauer suggests that you should be able to play everything with downstrokes, I mean, which is crazy, obviously, because sometimes it's quite fast. But I think, you know, just to give that, sort of entertain that as a possibility, I'm going to play my usual feel, which is, well, my usual technique, which is upstrokes and downstrokes. Okay, like that, and then I'm going to play all the downstrokes. Obviously, um, but it's not impossible. And actually, um, thinking about it, if you get really good at doing downstrokes, then you, your upstrokes are just an extension of the movement that you have to do to recover the downstrokes. So you should get pretty fast with the alternate picking if you need it, um, just just mechanically. Um, of course, the main reason why we do that. I think it kind of, it has a nice solid feel about it, and I feel like one of the things I think about rhythmically as well is like how the upbeat should be felt as a downbeat, so I'm going... Okay, so that's, that's one thing, this hand. Um, it's not to say, you know, alternate picking is wrong, uh, plenty of great players have alternate picked. Um, Although, interestingly, not my favourites. Then there's a Jimmy Rainey thing, which is, I, I think, I would imagine, I mean, I haven't gone into great detail, but he obviously plays up sweeps. Like that, for example, which is, you know, not a big deal. You can just twist your pick over, do that if you want, um, and you can go. I mean, uh, what's his face? Uh, Troy Grady claims that Tal Fado is essentially a down, downward pick slanter, which is his way of talking about, you know, gypsy picking and things like that, which is... Where you slightly pick heavily emphasizes downstrokes. Obviously, Tafalo didn't use entirely downstrokes. Um, uh, but a more modern player who uses mostly downstrokes is Mike Marino. And I really like Mike Marino's feel, I have to say, it works for him. Um, when he plays fast, he uses a mixture of economy picking and slurring, so he doesn't really alternate pick at all. I'm pretty certain, I mean, he sort of demonstrates that actually he has got alternate picking ability, it's something he works on. 
uh, or has worked on in the past, but actually when he plays he prefers the sound of all downstrokes where possible, and then when it gets faster he likes the fluidity of this economy and uh, you know legato influenced style, which is kind of much more modern, which you can also hear in players like Gillette Hexelman and so on. But it's got very specific rules for doing that to make it swing, which uh, I, I try to follow a bit in my own playing, although I, I tend not to do the economy thing um, when I'm playing fast. Um, uh, so yeah, so I mean, there's that, you know, and that, that, that's kind of interesting. I, I feel like we, we kind of talk these days to kind of, you know, if we play on A major scale, it will be... All, all very nice, uh, one finger per fret with alternate picking, and that's kind of school guitar playing. But I also think, like, the thing about this hand as well is, like, if you can get your thumb over the top and play with three fingers... And that sounds really good, it's just all down straight. And it just just like it just feels like idiot guitar playing because you're just using down straights and your three strong fingers. It's like somebody who can't really play guitar. But then I think about like Wes Montgomery and Jim Mullen and people like that and they're playing. Which even if it's not dead accurate, it still has a warmth to it, a fatness. And also the fact that you're sliding up and down is really good as well. Like I was watching a video of Wes and he plays this line, something like this. This is not exactly the baton, but he does this kind of thing. He's an F minor. He goes up to the F and he goes... Where am I playing? I play like force. Like that, just going along the string. So he's not thinking about positions at all. I mean, his, his fingering is very diagonal. And of course, he's playing with his thumb, but... It's like three fingers, um, you have to slide around, you can't really play a position even. You have to move, but actually that's not a bad thing. And you will kind of favour... You can use your little finger like that as well for those kind of characteristic little grace notes that Wes plays. But that three-fingered style, you know, is not to be sniffed at. People think this stuff is wrong. But I would argue um, that if they're doing it and it sounds good, then it must be right. It's not necessarily um, the only right way of doing it. I mean, many of my favourite players play with four fingers and someone in alternate pick and everything else. There's all kinds of different approaches to picking. But this approach is, I think, healthy. I think it's really good for getting a good sound. If I have a player who comes to me who already plays like that, I'm going to leave them alone. I'm not sure if I would be able to teach this as a technique from the ground up, because uh, this, this kind of stuff with scales, I find it much easier to teach classical left hand, just, just because that's the way I was taught and there's a methodology for it, and it will support you in your decisions in terms of you know, playing chords and so on and so forth. It's very flexible. But I have to say, you know, as you can hear, when I play with this left hand, I run into problems with the open strings ringing. I mean, it's not an unpleasant sound necessarily, but um, obviously I think many players want to eliminate that. And of course, with the thumb over the top, it's got that practically built in. Also, it's great for rhythm guitar. You know, I mean, when I play my, I wouldn't play my sort of minor seventh grip like this. I play it like this. You know, my a lot of the gypsy jazz chords, you know, require you to put your thumb over the neck and stuff. And obviously, Django played with two fingers, really. Um, but a lot of the uh, kind of modern gypsy guys play with three fingers, and the reason why they do that is because it's very diagonal playing. Like they play a diminished arpeggio. Read that position, right? And I'm almost quite embarrassed that I'm such a positional player. And even though I do slide around a little bit, I'm very, you know, I kind of feel like that kind of sound, you know, it's great. You know, that, that kind of fat, warm sound. And some of my favourite British guitar players play this way. Dave Clare from Jim Mullen. Um, yeah, Peter Bernstein. I mean, Peter Bernstein has, you know, um, the ability to play um, four-fingered chords or whatever, but when it comes to melodies, he does like to play with three fingers. Probably got that from Grant Green, you know. 
Um, certainly didn't go for his teacher, Jim Hall. He's very classical. He had a very classical left hand. So, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of putting it out there that maybe that these sorts of things that everybody learns in guitar school are a little bit, you know, they're not the only way to do things. They're, it's a good way. It's a very um, consistent way. And if you practice that way, you will develop chops. But on the other hand, the chops aren't always necessary. If you're playing medium tempo swing, and I'm going to try and play medium tempo swing. One, two, three, four... Strokes there, and there's certainly no need for me to to use fancy alternate picking with with four finger technique. There's no reason why you can't slip between them. So obviously this kind of position is very bad for playing stretchy chords. But if I can play stretchy chords like this or this, you know whatever, then I can easily go. It's not sort of comping double stops. Absolutely fine for doing that, isn't it? Uh, There's no no problem. I mean, even bebop heads. It's, it's entirely workable. Um, and if you know, if you can't get them up to speed, maybe you can use your fourth finger there. You know, um, Jimmy Rainey kind of used, I think, a combination. He had his hand pronated like this, so his thumb slightly over the top, if I remember correctly. But but he would also use his middle finger as well. He would have it up there if he needed it. But then he did most of his stuff like this with his three fingers. So you're not limited to just using three fingers, but this kind of... Get most blues juice out of the guitar that way, and jazz has got blues in it. It's not classical music. Uh, it has aspects of classical music, of course, but it also has aspects of blues. So in your technique, I think you should reflect that. Just a thought. Um, don't have to do it, I mean... Uh, and anyway, people get a bit cross about this. So I think I think they go to like guitar school, they go to guitar teachers, and instructors are keen to give them a thorough methodology, and maybe they're working, I don't know, from William Leavitt books or some other classic texts like that, and there's a particular way of doing things. So when you sort of say, well, actually, that's not necessarily the only way, or even necessarily the best way of doing it, um, if you look at players like Jimi Hendrix, um, Wes Montgomery, so on and so forth, they're using the three-fingered approach, perhaps... Uh, that's an alternative school of technique which is completely valid, I would suggest, you know, especially given, you know, if you're playing rhythm guitar, you're not going to be playing like this, because you'll run into all sorts of problems with muting, and you want to get that, that freedom in the, in, the right, in the right hand when you strum, right, for example, you know. But then you can go like this, you know, if you want to. Now you can straight. Now you're not limited to just playing one way. You, you can play both ways. And I would suggest maybe, you know, if you love those players, with Montgomery, Grant Green, Charlie Christian, so on and so forth, um, I would suggest that maybe it's worth a look. You know, just, just experiment and see, see how it feels. I mean, I don't think... Um, I'm just trained really to play with four fingers, um, quite a positional player. Um, I think it's quite hard for me to adapt to this way of doing things. Yeah, my little finger just gets used right away. You know, but I mean, I have to say that I do have a lot of fun trying this kind of approach out. And I think of it as naive guitar playing, but naive guitar playing is safe. You're not bending your wrist, you're not going to get carpal tunnel syndrome, and um, provided you're not too heavy on this hand, you're not going to, you know, create too much tension with the right hand, because you're not, you know, and it will help you swing, and it will help you play fewer notes, and that's surely a good thing. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>